What is going on, YouTube world? Um, mentioned it in the podcast, the Insert Revolution podcast, on Tuesday night. That can be found on the YouTube channel, the same name, 7.05 p.m. Central Standard Time. That I might do a little mock draft. Again, I like the goals, the, the videos that we do at the beginning of the year that I've done, I don't know how many years now. Try to get the folks more into that. It's, it's not, and it's never to hold yourself accountable, but you might be in a different collecting space at that particular period in time, so that when you go back November, December, see where, hey, where am I at? Or even if you go midsummer, it's to, what did I, what did I write down again? Um, you can see, see, see how your collecting uh, journey, how the map is coming together. So I figured I'd do this. I'm sure I'll be off on every one of these. I have no hot takes. <clears throat> other than the chatter that goes on. That you read about from all the, the pundits and the knowledgeable draft nicks. Um, so. The phone screens, uh, the glare and the old glasses. But uh, a lot's changed in the last nine days or so since brad and i and steve and Vinny and bob talked on the irp or you get the sense that it has no smoke screen possibly but uh i'll get into this i don't want to I'll, I'll have some stopping points here where i'll talk about some certain per particular instances where i i think and again it's i don't think it's just me a lot of uh, folks are thinking there could be some dealings done but that's pretty much the whole first round but there's not those key say five players you sit there and say there's this top tier second tier and then so on so forth there's depending on the board depending on your scouting depending on uh what you're looking for there's a lot of different and varying opinions so here's my opinion the first pick Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, it's long been Aiden Hutchinson, which a lot of draft nicks have said. I think it is going to be Trayvon Walker. I just, I think, <clears throat> I think he is an intriguing option with uh, Josh Allen, the former Kentucky DN that was, I think, six overall pick a few years back. Um, high motor. My motor players, and uh, I think he's number one. Number two would be Aiden Hutchinson. The Michigan DN stays home, goes to Detroit. Here's one of the first places there's a possibility of a trade, but again, there's I, I don't think there is. Uh, number three is sort of where I throw a wrench into things because I think there's too much fire behind these... Um, not the allegations, not the rumors, not just the whispers. I think Daryl Sting or Derek Stingley Jr., uh, cornerback, LSU, goes to Houston. They've got so many issues, so many needs, so many holes to fill, as it were. Um, they can go a myriad of directions. Again, offensive tackle, wide receiver, secondary. Uh, they they were linked. Early mock drafts to Kyle Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame. His stock has sort of slipped. Um, but I see a corner here. And if they don't take Stingley, it could be any one of those the tackles. Uh, Equanu or uh, Evan Neal. But I think Derek Stingley is uh, their pick. And then the Jets take Sauce Gardner. They're beyond thrilled to see him there. They need a secondary they need a lot of stuff too. They're, they're, they're position wise, they are not set anywhere. Um, running back might be the strongest, but everywhere else they can pick anyone, pretty much be an improvement. So, Sauce Gardner, number five, the Giants take Ikiwanu, Ikiwanu, uh, the tackle from North Carolina State. In my humble opinion, the best of the tackles. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean down the road. Doesn't mean for their system. I think Giants. <clears throat> he's a road grader. If you want to 
maximize Saquon Barkley and his potential, A, you need to give Daniel Jones time, and B, you need to have somebody block in the run game for Mr. Barkley. Um, if you don't, you're doing a disservice to them, and guess what? When you don't pick up their fifth-year option or you trade them away, they succeed and flourish somewhere else. You can look at it as a <clears throat> going hand-in-hand hand with a, a big factor of why they didn't uh, succeed because your O-line is a sieve. Uh, Carolina, here's your first trade opportunity because they don't have a pick till I think, 102 in the fourth round. If they don't trade back and somebody's not enamored enough to get up there to get somebody that they really like, a New Orleans, a Philly, some of these other teams, uh, Kansas City, Green Bay, um, I see them taking a tackle as well. Evan Neal, Alabama. You don't give any of your quarterbacks time. I don't care who your quarterback is. It's a broken down Cam Newton. It's the best New York Jets first pick ever. And Sam Darnold, our former first drunk, uh, former Jet. Um, you you need protection on that line, and you don't have much of any. And that's why you were in the position you were in. Christian McCaffrey, you probably want to get something. Nobody's really mentioned him. I know there's been some trade rumors with him as well, but you haven't given him an opportunity to really live up to the contract he just signed. So I say uh, Evan Neal. Uh, Giants are on the board again, thanks to the Justin Fields trade last year. I'm going Jermaine Johnson, the end, Florida State. His stock has really been bolstered the last couple weeks. His pro day was good. He's got another high motor. They just need people. They need that defensive line. You got uh, Leonard Williams, who's solid. You you pair him with somebody else that's, I won't say borderline elite, but has the tools and the motor and the, the wherewithal to become elite. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty then then you could sort of set up that secondary in that uh, or your back five or six back seven with you don't have to be elite there because if you're getting pressure from the quarterback that dictates everything else in the secondary and you can <clears throat> do some things there with some um, some talent that isn't exactly elite or top notch so uh, Jermaine Johnson the second there. Uh, Atlanta, they need a receiver. They need a lot, but they need a receiver. Garrett Wilson, Ohio State, fits that bill. Uh, nine, Seattle. Again, they you need a backer. You got rid of Bobby Wagner. You need secondary. You haven't had anything since the Legion of Boom. O-line, quarterback. You've got as many picks as you can. You get as much talent as you can this year. Minus the quarterback. If you take the quarterback, you take him later. Um, I'm going Charles Cross. Tackle Mississippi State. Their line's been bad for years. It's been bad. Um, I think Steve Hutchinson, that's one of the last ones I can remember. And that, was a, that was years upon years ago. That was like 06, 05, 06. And they've had pieces there since. But... They haven't had a cohesive unit. I think bringing in Cross, that's going to help. <clears throat> That'll help. And uh, they need it. They desperately need a tackle because their tackle play has been abysmal. Uh, Russell Wilson got sacked. An enamorant. It's not even a word. Amount of times. Just constant pressure. So you can't have your quarterback, especially now if you go from elite to serviceable. And Drew Locke and Geno Smith. So you need to protect them to at least give them a chance to throw to your uh, <clears throat> to Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Um, Ten Jets going defense again. Kavion Thibodeau has his fall ends at number ten. Again, there's been the the work ethic, the the desire questions. Um, at ten, it's it's still a, a, a risk. At four, it's too big of a risk. You've got too many other pieces that you could take at four. Ten, and that's a huge trade possibility as well. That's a that's a like a red flag, lead pipe lock, where if they can somehow pry Debo Samuel away from San Fran, who'd you rather have? Debo Samuel, that's going to be a legit number one for your young quarterback. And then put Corey Davis to number two. 
where he should be at, and then uh, Barrios still stays in the slot at three as a three. Um, or do you want Thibodeau? I'd take. Um, and I know I think, again, I'm not sure what they have second third round. I know they got extra picks from Carolina, from uh, the Darnold trade last year. So if they've got a second or a third, if it takes a first and a third, I do it again. They, I've seen the 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 argument against it, saying, okay, you're gonna pay him how much money? Well, Tyreek Hill is older, has more issues off the field. Sure, has more speed, but I'd rather have Samuel for a first, a third, and twenty five million than. Tyreek Hill for a first, whatever two seconds and a third, and that you you swap a pick or somewhere you do you get you give up a you get a fourth but you give up a six or something to that <clears throat> that effect. But again, I'd rather have that. So that that's going to be a a place where some uh, business will pick up. Uh, Eleven, the Redskins take Jamison Williams, um, receiver, Alabama. He's hurt, but him and McLaurin, I think will be a good duo for Wentz or whoever they get at quarterback. Minnesota stops the Kyle Hamilton fall. Uh, safety, Notre Dame at number 12. Number 13, Houston from the Deshaun Watson trade to Cleveland. Um, Chris Olave, receiver, Ohio State. Again, they need targets for Davis Mills. Uh, you need somebody... Brandon Cooks to 99 isn't going to do it, so you need, if one of the tackles were to fall here, or they move up, if they take the tackle at three, it, it changes here probably, <clears throat> you probably go defense, but, because uh, I don't think you're going to, you don't you don't have that luxury if you're Houston to go three and 13, not the record, but pick three, pick 13, and go one side, and not go the other, you have to go one and one. Um, for 14, they tried to get uh, Bobby Wagner. They didn't. Devin Lloyd slips to them, the linebacker from Utah for Baltimore. Um, 15, Philadelphia from Miami. They get a big target on the outside. That's They need a big, bulky target. Um, for Jalen Hurts, tell you have uh, none of these. They got some speedsters, but you need a big guy. You need that guy that's like 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". Uh, you go Drake London, receiver, USC. New Orleans is the first of their two picks in the next few. Um, from Philly through Indy, that's the Carson Wentz trade uh, last year. <clears throat> he was the first quarterback. Malik Willis, uh, Liberty. I think, and again, this is opinion for me, so I'm saying that. Hashtag scholarship. My opinion is Willis will probably turn out to be the better pro. It's going to take a McNair situation, Aaron Rodgers. You get a couple years, at least a year. You might get in for some spot duty. A couple, uh, Lamar Jackson, sort of like the, you get the gadget plays or whatever. But taking the verbiage, taking the playbook, take, because everything's going to be a work in progress there. I uh, know Sean Payton. So it's going to be, you can't put him in, it's going to be an absolute, you're going to go back to the Saints of the mid-90s and uh, mid-80s, where it was just a disaster, a dumpster fire. So give him time, let everybody sort of learn together, you might take a few bumps. That's going to be the problem for next year, that you gave up your first round pick uh, in this trade, the swapping of 6-8 picks, I think it was, with Philly. So Philly, incredibly smart. You got three first round picks this year. You don't need them. You got two instead. So you're able to parlay one for a first next year. Where New Orleans doesn't exactly look like <clears throat> much on paper. Which games aren't played on paper. They're played on your TV. So first quarterback there, Malik Willis, and then pick seventeen. Ah, uh, my Chargers. Uh, Trent McDuffie, corner, Washington. I like him more than the rest of the corners out there. Doesn't mean they're not going to take somebody else, but I think corner, even though they signed J.C. Jackson, 
you can't have enough good cover corners. It's it's football today. Um, D line would be another spot I could see them taking Jordan Davis. But if they've got a lot of these choices there, I just don't think as much as I'd like to see another Jerry Ball type player. Um, you just plug up the middle. At this point in time, you can get more value for that pick. You can trade back in the uh, back half of the first round, or if he drops to the second, <clears throat> trade up in there. Even though you don't have a second, you traded that for Kilo Mac. But there, there again, Mac on one side, Bose on the other. You don't need one of the edge rushers that's still out there. You need either a backer or you need some uh, secondary reinforcement. Philly, the next pick, this is New Orleans pick that they traded for about a month ago. Andrew Booth, corner. Clemson, again, never can have too many corners, solid corner. Um, New Orleans, Philly's pick. They get Trevor Penning, the tackle from Northern Iowa. you got, you got to replace Tremaine Armstead, or Taron Armstead. You have to do it early on, too. You can't wait. You can't have some sort of project. I like Philele, but I like him as maybe a late second, early third, where it's sort of in the Ali Moppert um, stage, even though Moppert was like a D2 guy. Philele at Minnesota, they're still learning to be done. There's still technique to be had or learned and uh, mastered. So you take somebody in the first, it's more of a, okay, we understand you're not a... Anthony Munoz, Jonathan Ogden, Orlando Pace, somebody of that ilk. But we're gonna we're gonna ride with you and uh, go through the growing pains. But we we need you to get better because we we trust in you. So number twenty, uh, the Steelers, again falls right to them. Sorry Bob, sorry Vinny, Kenny Pickett. They they need somebody else to. Uh, they need a developmental quarterback. Unfortunately, Haskins passes away they think he's going to be <clears throat> somebody of use there but not anymore that's unfortunate so you gotta you gotta you gotta play play the, the prepare and plan and uh pick it following to them that that that's what they do like they said feasibly you'd take somebody else because you need you need to reload a lot of offensive line uh receivers but Pickett, Pickett's the pick I pick. Uh, 21, Kair Elam, corner for Florida for the New England Patriots. You lose J.C. Jackson. you got to replace him. Uh, Green Bay from the Raiders. This is the Devontae Adams pick. Uh, Traylon Burks, from a wide receiver from Arkansas. Will they take a receiver for the first time since 02 and Javon Walker? I don't know. It's a, it's a stout draft. I don't think you want to wait if you've got a guy that you're looking at, so if that's their guy, which I don't know if it is, but <clears throat> I think it's either him or Dotson, and his name you'll hear pretty quick getting called, but um, probably between those two for that fourth or fifth best receiver, so it's going to be whatever their preference is. They need a receiver, though. You can't keep losing guys, and then guess what? You're not replenishing with any real serviceable talent. Sammy Watkins is not serviceable anymore um arizona at 23 george Karlaftis, uh the d end from purdue you know you need to replace chandler uh jones he's in vegas now for the raiders you need to replace some sort of pressure on the end um dallas at 24 zion johnson guard from boston college you need to pretty much rebuild your old line after it's just been decimated Lael collins gone uh, Connor Williams, I think he's over in Miami now. Collins up to Cincinnati. You need to start piecing those guys together because you don't have much of anything. And uh, a lot of those guys get hurt. Frederick's usually hurt, so you need to have pieces in place there, so um, that offense can run. Receiver would be another one too. I don't know if he'd go that high. Jerry Jones likes to make that splashy call. So Zion Johnson would be the a logical choice, but Jerry Jones is not logical. Um, Kyler Gardner, sort of my pick. Where a lot of guys, I think we talked about Brees Hall um, and Kenneth Walker. 
for Buffalo. They their running game sort of stagnates. Last year pushing into the playoffs, Singletary, Devin Singletary did better, but um, but you need to replace uh, Levi Wallace. That's a corner. So Kyler Gardner from Washington, the other corner. Tennessee goes Desmond Ritter, Fitzpatrick. Or not Fitzpatrick. Who's down there? Is it? I don't know. Whatever the quarterback is, I can't even remember. It's it's not Fitz Magic. Um, Tannehill. That's who it is. I always get those two confused. You need to have somebody there, a developmental prospect. Um, be perfect. The next guy, Tampa picking Jordan Davis would be another one, a D tackle from Georgia. Uh, you got to have somebody in there, stop the run. Another running back could be there. Uh, Fournette, not long in the tooth, but at the same time, um, I think it's a one or two year deal. I think it's essentially a one year deal. He just re signed. Uh, Nicobe Dean. Green Bay at 28, uh, sideline to sideline backer. It's, you can never have too many of that can, can actually cover and uh, stuff the run. Again, you lose a Darius Smith, you can plug him in somewhere at a, at a rush, edge rush or two. <laughs> uh, Kansas City from San Fran, from Miami via San Fran, uh, 29. Yona Dotson from the receiver from Penn State. And then at 30, uh, Arnold Ibikite, the end, Penn State. They've had Tom Bahali. I sort of look back at what he did, and he was in that position right here. Um, I think it's Boyd Boy or Boyd Maeve from a Minnesota, sort of the pick that everybody's looking at. Could it be? I'd, that'd be another solid pick as an edge rusher. But uh, cause Frank, like we said, Brad said Frank Clark. I, that trade hasn't worked out, so... He's got one year basically left, and then voidable years or option or very minimal cap hit type years left in the contract. Um, 31, Cincinnati. <coughs> Again, corners. I guess it depends on safety, too. There's uh, one from Michigan they could take here, depending on... Uh, Jesse Bates, if he resigns, or what they what if they, what they have a, for a, a feeling with him, uh, Reedy McCreary, corner from Auburn, ball hawk, some speed. You need that, not so much now in that AFC North, but overall, if you keep on um, progressing the playoffs, you need secondary depth that that showed up again in the Super Bowl. Um, and pick 32, last of the first round from the Rams, uh, Detroit Lions, and that's the Sam Bradford deal. They take Matt Corral, corn, or quarterback, Ole Miss. Now any of the last, I don't know, four picks, I'd say, <clears throat> probably, well, I'd say even more. Go up to 20, 26 with Tennessee on to Detroit, and those are, uh, trade possibilities you get the the fifth year option which is massive especially if you're taking a quarterback then you've got the five years to develop him or whatever other player just to see if maybe that third year they sort of break out fourth year okay now we got something it, it, it took a while but the the switch finally flipped and um yeah i i like corral over Coral over um, Sam Howell, but not by much. I know Ritter has gotten a lot of the pump the last few weeks. I I don't know. <laughs> I won't say these guys are interchangeable, but at the same time, it's going to be the team scouting preference. And uh, the injury really prohibited Corral from being a, a top probably 12, 15 pick that ankle injury at the end of the year so I think Detroit gets good value here if they take the pick if they don't, I think they can still parlay that into moving back 8, 10 spots so you're still <laughs> second round you're still two two picks at the top of the second picking up potentially two, three other picks because again the it's it's a it's a deep draft. It's not just 
five, like I said, the tiers. It's not five, 30, five, 40, then like everyone else. It's a good 50 players or so. <coughs> 60 players that are in like two segments. So depending on how you have those segmentized, um, you could have like 10 picks and then or 15 picks. Then you could have the other 35, 40. So I'll put it out there. If you guys have any uh, thoughts, jot them down below. Just something to do. Again, I love the draft. I don't know why I haven't done this for years, but it's their new tradition, I guess. So uh, take your easy YouTube. Brad, if you see this and you get, you can have time, put yours out. I know we talked about it a lot, but at the same time, just to have something as a standalone, that'd be nice. If not, no worries, my friend. No worries. Um, take your easy YouTube, and remember, every Tuesday night, 7.05 p.m. Central Standard Time, on the YouTube channel of the same name, The Insert Revolution Podcast.